Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. Hey. Hey. How you doing? I'm good. You ready for this? Nope. Okay. We did a podcast a while ago on upthinking. Yes. In that podcast, we talked about all kinds of thinking and and one of the ones that we mentioned, one of the types of thinking that we talked about a little bit was critical thinking, which has gotten some response and some comments about critical thinking versus up thinking. What is critical thinking? Um, what are our thoughts on it that are more, you know, they want to sort of our deeper insights into critical thinking in relation to itself and then also the wider topic of thinking. Yeah. So let's start slow. With yeah. what? Well, <laughs> I guess we should talk about what what it is, what, what it is widely thought of, and maybe some of its merits and its, some of its weaknesses as a thinking framework. I think in the last podcast, or the one that you're speaking of, I think we mentioned that there were, you know, 33 or so different yeah. types of thinking that 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 people talk about, and um, that all are variations on a theme of thinking. So there's really one thinking, and then there's all these other types of thinking. Some of them, you know, more useful than others. Some of them more specialized than than others. Some of them highlighting certain things and low lighting others tends to be the 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 main thing that they do is they tend to highlight certain aspects and low light other aspects, right? Yes. And that in and of itself, if your goal, the goal of the kinds of thinking that that we uh, research and, and, and deal with is is just thinking. And the goal of that is to better align with reality. Right. That's the stated goal, right. right? So anytime you highlight certain things and low light certain other things, you're like that detective that comes onto the crime scene and already has in mind what they're going to highlight and what they're going to low light. Right. And that by definition, is called a bias. Yes. If you're going to highlight something and low light something else, that by definition is a bias. Meaning we start with a preconceived notion, and because of that, we only see certain things and and don't see others because it's a preconceived idea of, you know, so when you say critical thinking, yeah. you, you mean that, that just that qualifier of critical has with it an inherent meaning or bias or frame yeah so 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 there's the term the the words right we we do have to take this slow because it's it's pretty nuanced um so there's the term critical thinking right so you're modifying thinking with criticality um his critical thinking has been around for a long time but that term has has historically been used in critical theory, critical race theory, all kinds of different critical theories that are out there right. that are part of the, for most people's world, they, they're not familiar with those things, but in science, we call those epistemologies or epistemological approaches. And criticality is one of those epistemological approaches, which is kind of, ep epistemology is a big word that just kind of means like, how you approach knowledge, the how you kind of the way we know things, yeah. Ways of knowing. Ways of knowing, yes. yeah. And and it it reduces down to how do we approach the creation of knowledge, right? Do we have a particular bent? Do we have a particular, I would say, bias? Right. Um, because a bent is a bias by definition, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so. You know, and sometimes those biases get us to certain places where we want to get to. Um, but to be clear, the kinds of thinking that we research and the kinds of thinking that we study really has to do with thinking is a way of creating models of reality. And the single litmus test of that model is to... To what degree does it represent reality? Right. And if it represents reality better, then it's a better mental model. It's better thinking. And if it doesn't, then it's not. So let's interact what you just said. So you said thinking, no yeah. qualifier, is 
uh, building a mental model and then the degree to which that mental model aligns with reality is better thinking, leveling up your thinking, good thinking. Yeah. Uh, so bump that up against the idea of critical thinking and tell me how that interacts. Yeah, so uh, again, it, you, we can look at it kind of from a perspective of like the linguistics of it, the, the, the terminology, the word critical and modifying thinking. Mm -hmm. We just talked about that a little bit. We can also look at it historically and what uh, what has kind of been put into the suitcase of critical thinking. Right. So historically, I mean, critical thinking is very important. Don't don't. I hope nobody gets me wrong that I'm saying yeah. critical thinking isn't important. It's it's absolutely massively important if the basic idea is to kind of reduce bias. The problem is historically, there's a lot of things that are put into the suitcase of critical thinking that actually increase bias, that get us further away from mental models that represent reality. One of those, the chief among them, number one, the number one perpetrator. Number one. <laughs> of, uh, that's in the suitcase of, that's been packed into critical thinking is goes back to a guy named Aristotle, mm -hmm. kind of founded, kind of an you know, idea. Western civilization. Mm -hmm. um, Aristotelian logic, so Aristotle's logic is the logic of the excluded middle, which means a two-valued logic, meaning he takes a continuum and he kind of says, let's exclude the middle and we got this value or this value. Right. So it's a true or false, one or zero, black or white logic. Right. And a huge amount of the critical thinking that is that is done today and taught today is predicated on that logic. Hmm. Now, that logic couldn't be further away from the logic of nature. Meaning, the logic of nature is multivalent. So meaning that way of thinking doesn't match with the reality of the way things actually are. Yeah, that, 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 not that way of thinking, but if your critical thinking is predicated, meaning, meaning if it's been influenced by, mm -hmm. see, that's the problem. Critical thinking isn't critical thinking isn't critical thinking, right? Like different people are using different approaches. And so when you hear the term critical thinking, it's hard to know, well, are we using kind of a basic, you know, Aristotelian logic, mm -hmm. Aristotle's logic that is bivalent? And folks maybe don't even know who Aristotle is or that he had a logic or, you know, Aristotelian sounds like a really huge word. But all it means is that, that you have a true or false value, guilty, not guilty, one, zero, black, I see. white. I see. So what you're saying is if critical thinking has underneath it yeah. that the bivalency, bivalent. the one or the other yep. Bi thinking. means two. Right. That is a problem because the world or the reality of things we're thinking about doesn't exist in bivalency. So we got to slow down there too, because that's a really important point. Mm -hmm. So it's not that the, the the nature or the universe or reality, whatever word you want to use, it's not that there isn't bivalency in reality. There is. Mm -hmm. It's just that that logic doesn't cover all the different things that are in reality. Multivalency, which just means logic that's more than two values, mm -hmm. or sometimes called fuzzy logic. There's a, a lot of different types of logic, but but multivalent logic, logic that's that can have more than two values, um, is capable of doing bivalent logic. Right. But bivalent logic is not capable of doing multivalent logic. So. Nature is multivalent. It doesn't mean that nature can't sometimes be bivalent. Right. Right? I mean, it's bivalent when a tiger kills a zebra, right? Like, that's pretty bivalent for the zebra. Right. <laughs> right? Uh, or a lion, I guess. Uh, so, you know, so there is bivalency in nature. I'm, we're not saying that there's no bivalency. We're just saying that if you approach the world with this only two-option logic, you're going to run into a lot a lot of situations where that logic doesn't work with the right. with the world's logic. Right. Right. But what you're also saying is in reality, every once in a while, there's a situation where bivalency is perfectly adequate or 
or worse. Not even every once in a while, a lot. Sometimes. You know, like, I mean, just think of all the times where you got to choose something, right? Yeah, you know, like those coffee or tea. Coffee or tea, yeah. right? And, you know, a lot of times we can take a bunch of choices and we can get down to the, mm -hmm. to the final choice by setting up bivalencies, right? So it's, again, it's not that bivalent logic isn't incredibly useful, I just would choose a logic that can include that, but isn't limited to that. That makes right? sense. Yeah. We, we, we want to include bivalent logic, but not be limited by bivalent logic. I like that. That makes sense. So a lot, a.k.a. A, you know, all <laughs> of the critical thinking that 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 I've seen in mm -hmm. practice <clears throat> is almost entirely based on. Aristotle, well, Aristotelian. I hate saying that word because it's such a big word, but but bivalent logic, bivalent Binary logic, like thinking. two base logic, right? Right. Okay, I get that. Uh, but critical thinking, even when you just Google thinking, yeah, critical thinking Huge. is by far the most popular the type of thinking out there, which means downstream. Everybody wants to be a critical thinker. Everybody wants to create trainings in critical thinking. Yep. Colleges have the, you know, Cornell has a critical thinking test. Yep. Um, so it's very popular. Mm -hmm. But I guess what is its shortcomings? What are its merits? What are its strengths, you know, from your perspective? You know, its, it's basic premise is its strength, which is, but that premise gets kind of like lost. Mm -hmm. But it, but it's basic, to be fair to it, it's basic premise, which is let's try to get things right, mm -hmm. is very similar to let's get aligned to reality. It's basic premise, let's try not to be biased, is very similar to let's get in alignment with reality uh, to metacognition and all that kind of stuff. The problem is it says that and then does bivalency. It says that, and then does the bias of criticality. It says that, mm. and then does even cultural types of bias are embedded or packed into its suitcase. And so in spirit mm. and, in, in, and in intention most of the time, I think it's, it's you know, why it's so popular and why it's so desired. Right. In practice, it kind of, um, it kind of makes a lot of mistakes. And and I think what, what's important is what you're saying is, yes, as, as a general idea, we want to have the skill of being able to be critical thinkers. <clears throat> but maybe over time, its adoption or the way that it's practiced or framed out for people tends to take us off course of its original intent. Yeah, I would say I would say the great, the great saying caveat emptor, right? Mm -hmm. To buyer beware, like buyer beware, because what you don't want to do is say, oh yeah, oh like I love those intentions. I'm gonna go get some of that, mm -hmm. and then get taken down the the Aristotelian bivalent logic, yeah. the sort of culturally misappropriated logic, mm -hmm. um, the critical nature of critical thinking. Right. Uh, that's that's baked into it, that has become baked into it. Y you know, those are pitfalls. Those are traps that you want to avoid. Uh, reducing your bias. Awesome. Yeah, Wanting sure. to be more in alignment with reality, which it doesn't really talk as much about, but that's, you know, really important. Uh, being more aware which we call in science metacognition, being more aware of not only your thinking, but your emotion, mm -hmm. your conation, your motivations, yep. right? Being more aware of how much of those and your experience, how much those things influence your thinking. Those are critically important to... No pun. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah, that's a different use of the word critical. So we've talked about sort of what it is generally, what it what its strengths and weaknesses are, that it's very popular. I wonder if we should get into sort of the nitty gritty of a little bit, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. I knew we were talking about this today, so I did a little bit of background research. And mm -hmm. what's interesting is, like many things, there seem to be many interpretations yes. of what it means, which means 
we're all saying the same word and doing different things or meaning different things when we're critically thinking. So that's the mm -hmm. first problem, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have a real uh, widespread common understanding. What I did understand though, over all of that is there are steps. Yes. Some people have three steps, some people have seven or nine steps, but there are steps to yes. critical thinking. Um, there are things like observing, analyzing, evaluating, inferring, some of them add um, uh, making judgments. Mm -hmm. So what, are, what do you see as the sort of the, the strengths or the pitfalls of taking these sort of stepwise approaches to these things? Yeah, good question. Um, so the way, the way that I would think about it is uh, use that old uh, model SOT, strategic, operational, and tactical, right? right? So think of that as like if you if you took a balloon up in the air at the 100,000 foot level, looking down, seeing the big picture, you, mm -hmm. you'd be at the kind of strategic level. Right. And then if you kind of took that down to 20,000 feet, you'd be at the operational level, let's say. And then if you took that all the way down to the ground, you'd be at the tactical level. So let's think about these things at these levels. Right. We just talked about kind of the big, deep mm -hmm. issues, the big patterns like bivalency versus multivalency, yeah. the, the focus on criticality, those kinds of things. Those are kind of the strategic level. Right. The big buyer picture. bewares, right? Right. At the operational level is what you're what you're referring to, right? Which is at the operational level, it's hard to know like which critical thinking is the critical thinking. There's so many of them. There's so many different versions right. of critical thinking, and they're all they all seem to be, you know, different. Just enough. <laughs> yeah, just enough different that it's hard to make any coherence out of them. So at the operational level, there's all those problems, right? Mm -hmm. And um, one never knows, is, is this one the one because it's popular or because it's promising or, uh, or both? Right. Um, now, if we go down to the tactical level, that means we let's just say we take one of them and then we say, OK, at the tactical level, we're going to be, you know, uh, using this particular stepwise process at that level. It turns out, right, at the tactical level, we're supposed to get to some real detail. Mm -hmm. At that level, critical thinking is incredibly generic and general. So think right. about some of the things that you just said. Identifying the problem. Yeah. Really? That, that's incredibly general. Like, how do you do that? Yeah. How do you identify the problem? We, we have whole courses on... Mm -hmm. problem definition and problem identification. You could spend an entire semester on understanding how to just identify that. and define problems, right? There's actually a great book just on problem definition that yeah. I read in grad school. Oh, it's yeah. It's an entire book. Yeah, exactly. There's a whole field on it. A whole field on it. Okay, go ahead. Right? Or, you know, analyze it. Really? Al <laughs> what does that <laughs> I mean, mean? That's like a pretty big, <laughs> right. big thing. What do I actually do inside of Analyze or evaluate it, mm -hmm. right? There's a whole field called evaluation, right? Yep. That, that's all about what it means to evaluate, right? Right, and there's different. But also there's overlap probably between the two. What do you mean? Analyze and evaluate. like. Sure. In a lot of ways, a a analysis is part of evaluation. And analysis is part of problem yeah. definition and right. problem solving. So, uh, you, you know, I think I think when you get into some of these steps, it's sort of like saying, you know, how do I play basketball? Oh, dribble. Right. <laughs> Okay. Nobody's showing you. And that. nobody's showing you like, okay, well, how how do I actually go about doing that, or how do I play lacrosse? Oh, you know, catch the ball with the stick, right? And and throw the ball with the stick. Okay, that that sounds easy. That's not quite right? enough information. It's a, we want to be a little at the tactical level. We want to be a little bit more uh, specific, right? right? And I find that these different critical thinking models, even if you were to accept one, even if you were to say, hey, let's let's utilize this one, right, right. at the tactical level. Because at the operational level, you're debating which one and what which one's better and blah, blah, blah. But at the tactical level, you've decided on one. You're still so general. You're almost up at 20,000 feet. Right. Right. So and, and we've got to do stuff on the ground. 
Right. So what's the what's the fix to that? Well, I think the fix is 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 things like DSRP theory, which is multivalent, D, that tells you exactly what to do. Like as an example, one of the steps in the most popular critical thinking model, the first step is observation. Right. Right. Well, boy, there's a lot. Observation is a really general term, right? Mm-hmm. How how do I do observation? I mean, there's a whole fields of of research on just you know observational methods. Right. Right. So observational observing something isn't as simple as you might think. How do I observe something and not impose my own bias on it? Right. Right. That's the trick. In order to do that, for example, DSRP would say you have to understand your perspective. It has to be very clear what your perspective, what your point is and, and the view and how you interact with the view. Right. And then you would have to try to do things to to ensure that whatever feedback you're getting from the system isn't confirmation bias right. confirming your own biased perspective that's very important that's very important so how would we do that and there's lots of different ways to do that um, so observing how, how do we know for example that when we observe or another one collect data yeah which is a form of observation, right? Mm-hmm. So when we collect data, how do we know we're not cherry picking the data? Right. Right. Which is a distinction problem and a perspective problem at once. Well, even or if it's the right data in the first place. Yeah, right? exactly. Like there's a lot of nuance exactly. to it. Right. So it sounds like what what you're alluding to, and maybe we should be more um, specific, is that so there's this this thinking there's this type of thinking called critical thinking, mm-hmm. and there's the critical part and there's the thinking part, right? And it sounds like what you're saying is there are steps to what we call critical thinking, but underneath those steps, what gives them teeth, those steps, is this whole idea of what it means to think in the first the place. The thinking part. So like <laughs> yeah. observation is is what you just said. Is it, like what is observation? How do we remove our perspective from that? Well, that's all coming straight from just the underlying patterns of how we think across the frameworks or underneath all of the frameworks, right? Yeah, I think that's actually a brilliant way to think about it. it is is they when we look at critical thinking, they kind of packed the suitcase of the critical part right. and then they left the suitcase of the thinking part mm-hmm. is empty. Right. Right. And so when you get into, OK, I, I've got my I've got my Aristotelian logic, I've got my critical mindset on. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to have some cynicism about, you know, right. about the, the truth variables and things like that. I'm going to try to figure out what's true, and what's false because it's binary. And OK, I got that part. Now all I got to do is figure out this thinking thing. Right. <laughs> Which is infinitely more <laughs> complex and harder to do than this. And in fact, if you do this well, the thinking part, you don't need this. You don't need this suitcase. In fact, what you'll find is that suitcase is a bias producing suitcase. Just by the the critical piece of it. Mm-hmm. Critical is actually a perspective that's going to bias in many ways or shape what you're going to be looking for and what you see and what you don't see in any problem set or thing that you're thinking about. Yeah, it's actually a set of perspectives. It's a it's a system yeah. of part whole, a part whole system of perspectives. So it not only has the the critical nature to it, right? I'm going to I'm going to sort of be a, mm-hmm. a cynical or skeptical or whatever word you want to use, right? I'm going to be skeptical, mm-hmm. right? That's that's inherent in there. I'm going right, so that's a bias. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not against skepticism. I'm simply saying that if I arrive on the scene a skeptic, I arrive on the scene biased. Right, but what if somebody said to you, "That's on purpose, and they think it's valuable"? Then that's their that's their metacognitive choice to to be that way. I I I do not find that. I think if you come to the scene. Mm-hmm sort of an empty vessel willing to take in information and let the scene tell you what's going on in all of its reality Mm -hmm. and all of its different informational communication points, I think you get a better view of things. And I think that's true in 
basic human everyday examples, right. but it's and it's also true when you're doing incredibly difficult, sensitive, and and complex research. You're essentially trying to reduce or control for any of the possible biases that could happen. Right. And so injecting a bias in is not pur- is is not uh, it could be purposeful, but not necessarily uh, have good utility. Yeah, it's, in it in would practice. Be, in practice, it would be right. it would it would be really yeah. I mean, just think about think about if you if you were doing like research interviews. Mm-hmm. And you had a team of researchers that you were training to pull these interviews off, right? And yep. you're doing, you know, scientific research. Yeah. And right before it, you had all this protocol and all this kind of stuff on how to do the interviews. And right before they went in, you said, now remember, be skeptical. It would change everything. It would change everything about how those interviewers interviewed and yeah. It, it would flavor everything. It would it would be like putting rose colored lenses on them or some yeah. colored lens, and it would change all the things that they ask, all the things that they see, all the things that they observe. Mm-hmm. It would have a significant impact on the research, and it would be bad research. It would. It would be biased. It would be biased, which, which is, is bad by definition. Not yeah. Right. Interesting. So I think. I think even if you even if you you know if you want to do that and and if that's if that's the the way that you've chosen to go about it and you're aware of it you know it's a free country go do whatever you want to do but but um, I personally would try to avoid those kinds of biases and that doesn't even get at that's not the most significant problem the most no. significant problem that's is the right. bivalency that's yes. the most significant problem. Right. From earlier, yes. Yeah. So, so you're already walking in with the mother, or should say the father, because of Aristotle, of all biases. Yes. I mean, it is a huge bias to be bivalent. Yes. And you're walking in with that. Which has a huge impact on everything you do. Bonkers impact. It Not has a huge bonkers, bonkers impact. <laughs> That's a, you know, like a bonkers. an absolutely bonkers impact on on what you observe, what you analyze, how you analyze, yeah. how you evaluate, right? Value what you value, yeah, or infer what you infer, yeah, right. Let's say I'm listening to this conversation, and I say to myself, okay, I grok the conversation so far, but I believe that. Critical thinking is a skill I want to develop. Yes. And maybe what you're saying is the existing frameworks come short of actually developing what we would call a valuable skill of being able to be critical when necessary. Mm -hmm. So the question that that I would imagine people who are watching would say, well, okay, I want to be good at this. I buy into the fact that maybe some of the existing frameworks aren't quite quite there Mm -hmm. but how do i how do i develop that skill just like how to become creative how to become critical how do i become more scientific like how do we how do we develop those skills in and of itself right yeah i i i think generally speaking i would say uh, absolutely thinking is is uh is one of the most important skills you can train yourself in and train your team in and you train your kids in and train whoever in uh i would just focus on the thinking part I'd, the thinking part where is where all the action's happening right? right the thinking part is where the good or the not so great uh behaviors and techniques are occurring so i would just focus on the thinking part and and if you want to call that critical thinking that's fine i don't care what you call it uh but uh, I would focus on the thinking part. And I think uh, what you're saying is if you focus on the thinking part, all of those types of thinking, you get them all kind of for free because they're all yes. based on thinking. Yes. It's so it. critical thinking has a lot to do with the perspectives you're taking, the distinctions you're sure. making, whether or not you're seeing relationships, mm-hmm. all of that, just as creativity has mm-hmm. those same things, right? Yes. So well, and some some of the critical thinking things, believe it or not, some of the some of the critical yeah. thinking models, literally will have one of the steps is think creatively. 
Yeah, I saw that. You know, like, what is that? And then you're like, well, what does that mean to me? You know, that's a whole world of of general. It's like a Matryoshka doll of confusion, right? You do one thing and then you're like, wait, what does that mean? And then you do the next thing and you're like, wait, what does that mean, right? Yeah, I I just don't. I think at the end of the day, here's what thinking is. You're distinguishing things from each other. Mm -hmm. You're deciding what those distinctions are. You're doing all of this from... A perspective right that you should definitely be aware of as much as is humanly possible and you're you're making distinctions between this and that constantly you're relating these different distinctions that you're making mm-hmm. you're grouping or part holing the different distinctions that you're making right and you're generating those distinctions, altering those distinctions, altering those relationships and those groupings based on different perspectives. That is what you're doing when you're thinking. And if, if, if you said to me, well, what am I doing when I'm evaluating? Well, you're doing all that, but you're deciding first a, a singular perspective. Yes. Which could be made up of several things, several parts. So yeah. it's a part whole grouped perspective, right? that you're going to use as the lens to determine the value or non-value of something. That's what evaluation yeah, that's means. Exactly what it is. So when somebody says evaluate it, who who knows what that means? Oh, we do know what that means. It's setting some criteria to make a judgment. Setting a set of criteria right. to make a value judgment on okay. some other set of things. Right. Right? So right. that's a part whole perspective looking at a part whole system. Yes. That's the thinking that's going on. Right. Now if we want to label that evaluation, fine. It's called evaluation. But what's more important than the label evaluation is how do I know what to which things to move around and right. change and how do I know if I've done it right? Yes. Right? Analytical thinking, so analysis, which the, the, you know, there's two things and and we call it zoom in, zoom out or part whole, right? Yeah. Analysis tends to be breaking things down into parts. Yes. Synthesis tends to be going okay. up, right? In mm-hmm. uh, the, this thing's a part of this larger whole, this larger whole, this larger context. Well, so do we only want to do analysis? Do, don't we want to do analysis and synthesis? And when when we say we want to do analysis and synthesis, isn't that just literally part whole? Yeah, I mean, right? that's interesting. And it, and then if we have relationships. Mm -hmm. between the parts and relationships between the holes. And we have this nested system of related, interrelated parts that goes up and down in the world synthetically and analytically. That is thinking. Right. And no matter what you're thinking about, you're going to be doing these things that I'm talking about, these D, S, R, and P things, distinction systems, relationships, and perspectives. So that's the suitcase of thinking. And that suitcase describes all of these modifier suitcases, whether it's critical or systems or, you know, creative thinking or all the modifier to thinking. This this thinking suitcase invented those things. Yeah. (laughs) So the thinking suitcase Uh. can model those things. Mm -hmm. So if this suitcase can model these suitcases, then you don't need these suitcases because you can you just need this one because you can build whatever you want and you can build combinations of them. Or you can leave them behind and just take this on your trip. Well, and you can take this one anywhere. You can take it anywhere because it's packaged right here. When we were working in schools, I used to say it's like a backpack that every student can have with them as a toolkit, whether they're in English, they're in math, kindergarten, sixth grade, high school. If they have that, they can do anything. It's the best toolkit we have. Yep. This little three-pound mass of cells in our skull is the best and best to a suitcase we got the best tool we have and what does it do it thinks mm-hmm. it organizes information for meaning that's what it does all day long it's it's gonna do all the different types of thinking to figure things out yeah and it created all the different types of thinking. That's true. So, <laughs> it, you know, it's like you can you can learn 33 things or you can learn one thing well and get the 33 things for free. 
Yeah, that sounds like to a me, good deal. To me, that sounds like a better deal. It's a great deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what What would we want? What would you want the takeaway to be from this conversation for people? Given that we had so many comments on the last one. I guess the takeaway is like, let's say, I, I don't know which metaphor to use, but let's say I'm, basketball works. I don't know why I always use basketball because I wasn't, I didn't play basketball <laughs> in, in any kind of formal way. But um, let's say you have basketball and you have, you know, and you have all these people arguing about should, is, is women's basketball better than men's basketball? Is 12 year old basketball better than 14 year old basketball is dog basketball better than you know cat basketball is outdoor basketball better than indoor basketball like they're all slightly different but they're all basketball right so if 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 i said i like playing outdoor basketball better than indoor basketball like that's not saying indoor basketball is bad it's just saying you know whatever there's preferences but at the end of the day, you're going to have to learn to play basketball. Right. Right? You're going to have to learn to play basketball. And you can't keep talking around it because it's outdoor or indoor or men's or women's. At the end of the day, you got to get good at basketball. Right. And I, I think the criticism is not to critical thinking. The criticism is we need to unpack the thinking part. Yeah. I mean, we're we're birds of a feather. Anybody who's who's promoting thinking is a friend of mine. You know, like yeah. I, you know, I think thinking is the most important thing. I think the research tells us that that thinking is the most important thing we can be doing for our kids and for our work and for our personal life in all kinds of ways, right? Metacognition and all this kind of stuff. But we've lost or we never found what's inside the thinking box what's inside the thinking right. suitcase and we got to unpack that suitcase and help people with that suitcase because that's the suitcase that yeah. matters of all the suitcases. of all the suitcases yeah. and and i think when we talk about things like evaluate or infer or observe or communicate or be creative or uh, be analytical or solve the problem I mean, imagine if I was a consultant and I came in and, and, and you're like, hey, we got this problem. And I go, oh, just uh, solve the problem. And they're like, yeah, why didn't we think of that? <laughs> yeah. Solve the problem. That, that's a yeah. great idea. I'm glad we hired you. Yeah. You know, <laughs> right? like you're like, what does that do for me? Right. Right. Or if I just said, well, you got to you got to evaluate that. Right. Meaning there's yeah. something always underneath that. You got to get yeah. analytical. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, that's th those are such general terms that don't tell me what to do and how to know if I did it wrong. Mm -hmm. And if I did it wrong or if I got results that weren't the results I expected or wanted, how do I go back and, and what do I change? Right. Right. None of those terms tell me that. That's right. The that's ESRP right. tells me that. So you've got to go underneath. Yeah. Once you go underneath, then all of it starts to have tactical Yes. practical things you can do and that will make you better at any of those other things that you're trying to do yep and because and so if we go back to that sot strategic operational tactical i think at the strategic level we got to make sure that it's not bivalent and that it doesn't have so much of this influence of the skeptical criticality right because that's a bias so we want to avoid bias and especially avoid the bivalency bias at the operational level you know, that's really for the field of critical thinking to sort of say, why do we have so many models? How come we can't get any empirical, you know, basis for this, for the, what the steps of this thing are? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's an indication that we don't really. Just some widespread agreement. Have a lot of validity in, in the thing. And, and then at the tactical level, even if you chose which model you wanted to use, it's still so general. I, there, it's not, there's not very much you can do with it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so you got to go beneath. So you got to go beneath and think about the thinking part. So I'm a big proponent, big supporter of critical thinking because it's thinking. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, hopefully nobody hears anything different than that. Thinking is is wildly important and, and we need to make it more important. I just think we can unpack it a little bit better and we can use the research that we that we know today. 
Um, right. To be you know, I think we're using like a 70 year old model for thinking, you know, like your, your grandpa called and he wants his thinking model back. Yes. But you're saying focusing on the thinking part, we can get better at all of, all of it. That yes. Like it, it, that, that's the key. The key is to focus on that. The, the, the foundational, tactical, tactical specific stuff. Specific things yes. that you're doing when you're thinking and the things that you can do differently when your thinking doesn't work out the way you intended. Right. Or doesn't, the results that you expect, you don't get the results that you expect. You think one thing is going to happen a certain way. You're, you think you're going to get X, Y, Z results and you get PDQ results. Yeah. When that happens... That's reality giving you feedback that your thinking was wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, I need a model or I need, I need knowledge that helps me know, okay, so this was how I approached it. I was looking at it from th these perspectives. I made these distinctions. I saw these relationships, this part whole structure, and I got the wrong result. So, so what can I do differently? Well, I could, I could change the perspectives. I can mm -hmm. add perspectives. I could change the distinctions that I'm making. That's often the case, right? The distinctions right. I'm making are off. I could find more relationships in the system that I didn't see. Mm -hmm. Some other relationships are causing things to happen. I could group things differently. I could see them as being structurally grouped differently. Yes. And believe it or not, those are those are the tactical things that, that are going to change your thinking. I believe it. <laughs> well, yeah, you should. Uh -huh. It's I believe that was a great conversation. Cleared up a lot of stuff I hope for so. me. Yeah. With that, we're gonna say that's a wrap. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. That's a wrap. <laughs> that's a wrap. We've been thinking about critical thinking, and that's a wrap. Mm -hmm.